Hi, I'm Hanish Bhatia and I work in the climate change team at CRES. And today I'll be walking you through CRES Carbon Footprint Dashboard. CRES Carbon Footprint Dashboard is a tool which CRES has created to provide our real estate investor members with the ability to calculate, visualize and analyze the energy consumption as well as the GHG emissions for their CRES real estate portfolios. So as an investor member, to access the tool, you would go into the investor portal and click on carbon footprint in the right hand side menu here. The page will open up for the tool and at the top you can see the blue box here which provides help and assistance to get started and understand the product. For detailed guidance, you can click here. This will take you to a web page which will have the gist about how to use the tool as well as some frequently asked questions to help guide you and get started on understanding the product. To understand the methodology, you can click here, which will provide you the PDF, which has the methodology as well as a glossary of all the terms which are used in the carbon footprint dashboard. However, if you have any questions at any point, please do not hesitate to contact us and you can click here, which will take you to the contact form for GRESP. To get started on generating a carbon footprint dashboard, an investor can choose uh, the square meter or square feet as the unit. This will impact how you see the energy intensity or the GHG intensity in the carbon footprint dashboard. Then an investor needs to choose which of the entities in their portfolio which they want to generate a carbon footprint dashboard for. So this list will have all the entities to which an investor has been granted access to. So granted access to through the benchmark report. The entities should have filled out the performance component of CRESP to choose which entities the investor wants to have the carbon footprint dashboard for. You can select each of those entities through clicking on the button here. There must at least be two entities selected to generate a dashboard. If there is a specific entity which you would like to search for, you can click on the search button here and use this option. And we also provide the ability to filter all the list of entity selection by location, by property type, by legal status, as well as by the investment strategy. For each entity which the investor wants to generate a carbon footprint dashboard for, what is required is to fill in the entity ownership percentage. This is the percentage of the entity which the investor owns. So this needs to be a number between 0 and 100 uh, in percentage terms. So to fill it out, you would fill in the, what is the entity ownership percentage. This can also be in decimals. If an investor has access to a large number of entities, we also have the option here to export the list of entities here as a CSV. In the CSV, the investor can select which entities they want to generate the carbon footprint dashboard for, as well as fill in the entity ownership percentage. The rest of the entities can be removed, and then that same CSV can be imported through the Import Entities button here and this will automatically be reflected on the tool here, which entity selection you have, as well as the entity ownership percentage. If you would like to view which entity selection has been made, you can select here, and the selected entities will provide an overview of all the entities which have been selected, as well as the entity ownership percentage. In case any entity needs to be removed, you can use the Remove button here, or if you want to refresh and start all over again, the remove all option here can be used as well. Once these steps are completed, the investor can now generate the dashboard by clicking on the button here. After generating the dashboard, what you will see is this screen here. On top, you will be able to see this blue box which provides the link to a survey. Please provide us feedback through this survey as it will help us improve the current product as well as future iterations of the product. You can see the number of entities in the selected portfolio. The same blue box with the guidance as well as the methodology and the ability to contact Chris for any questions is also available on the top. Below you will see two tabs in the dashboard. 
So one tab is the energy tab and the other tab is the GHG tab. These tabs provide the energy and GHG metrics respectively. Under each tab, you will have the option to navigate between two different views. One is the portfolio view and the other is the entity view. In the portfolio view, you will be able to see the breakdown of your portfolio's energy and GHG data as per the country and property sector. So on top, you will see the to aggregate energy consumption metrics as well as the energy intensity by floor area for the selected portfolio. The chart below provides the split between uh, reported energy consumption as well as the CRESP estimated energy consumption. So by using the CRESP estimation model, the data coverage is completed. So what this shows is how much of the energy consumption was completed using the CRESP estimation model. The charts below provide the energy consumption broken down by country and property sector. You can hover over the charts and this gives us the specific metrics for those country and property sector cross-section. The chart below here provides the same thing the other way around in terms of our property sector broken down for each country. And you can also see what percentage of the energy consumption is being contributed by this property sector. The charts below show the energy intensity in the portfolio broken down by country and property sector, as well as individually for property sector and country. Finally, in the end, you see the table which provides all the data which was shown above in the charts in a tabular form. Scrolling back up, we see the filters so you, an investor can interact with the data on the chart by using the filters here. So they can filter by property sector, by country, or by legal status if both listed and non-listed entities are included in this portfolio. Going on to the entity view, The entity view shows the metrics for each entity which was selected in the input stage. And the data here reflects the entity ownership percentage which was input by the investor. So this is based on the entity ownership percentage. This is not the aggregate energy consumption of the entity. On the GHG tab, the investor has the ability to choose between location-based methodology or market-based methodology as per the GHG protocol with these buttons here. On the GHG portfolio view, the investor will be able to see the aggregate GHG emission metrics as well as the GHG intensity by floor area. The data source chart will provide the breakdown as per the calculated GHG emissions based on reported energy consumption and the calculated GHG emissions based on GRESP estimated energy consumption. The charts here provide the breakdown of GHG emissions by country and property sector. The first chart provides the aggregate GHG emissions broken down by country and property sector. So on the left here, you can see the countries and for each property sector, in that specific country, you can see the GHG emissions arising from there. The percentages provide a what percentage of the GHG emissions in the real estate portfolio does that country contribute. The same thing is provided in the chart below as per property sector, where it is broken down for each property sector and for each property sector by country. An investor can also see what emissions are coming from which scope. So scope one, two, and three as per the GHG protocol. In scope three, this only includes the tenant-related building emissions in the portfolio, not the entire scope three emissions of that entity or that portfolio. The charts below provides the breakdown of the GHG intensity by country and property sector and then individually for property sector as well as country. 
in the table below for each country and property sector it is reflected in the same data which was shown in the charts above on the entity view the investor can see the entity level metrics based on the aggregated asset level data as well as the entity ownership percentage which was entered in the input stage so for all entities which were selected to be part of the portfolio the entity level metrics can be seen in a tabular form to download the data which is shown in the dashboard the investor can click on the download pay data button here and the data can be downloaded in an excel format for each the energy portfolio view the energy entity view the ghg portfolio view as well as the ghg entity view to convert the entire dashboard into a pdf an investor can click on the convert to pdf button here and that will can provide a pdf format of the dashboard to go back to your entity selection the investor can click on the edit button here and this will take you back to the entity selection which can be edited again and a new dashboard can be generated again the dashboard will not be saved so if a new dashboard is generated you lose access to the previous dashboard we look forward to sharing your feedback on this tool and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you.